Hi guys, I'm Debbie Thomas, facialist and owner of the D. Thomas Clinic. Today I'm going to talk to you about retinols. Retinols belong to the family of nutrients called retinoids, which are derivatives of vitamin A. There are quite a few different vitamin A derivatives, and I will talk about some of the others later on, but really a lot of my experience is with retinols. They've been used in skincare for over 30 years, so we've got a lot of science backing the effectiveness of them. However, originally retinoids were used as an acne treatment and it wasn't until sort of the early 90s that the side effects of retinol use for acne was that skin was looking younger, fresher, smoother um, and more even. So suddenly everyone started paying attention to the fact that, that retinoids had a very, very good age management benefit as well. So since then you've had a lot of dermatologists and plastic surgeons um, and skin specialists really rating this ingredient because it is so scientifically proven. Okay, so one of the main questions I get asked is when should I start using a retinol? What age? Well, really pretty much any age can use retinol. If you're under 30, the reason you would use retinol would probably be because you've got acne or you suffer from oily skin and you're prone to congestion, so blackheads, whiteheads, um, and also open pores. So all of those can be improved with using retinol. Also, when you use retinol over a long period of time, you also reduce the risk of getting hyperpigmentation from um, like post acne marks when you sometimes get the brown spots. It's sort of like a preventative for the, some of the scarring. It's corrective for scarring, pigmentation and redness. So really it has a lot of benefits to the skin if you are prone to breaking out congestion and acne. Then as you move into your 30s, the main signs that you're probably gonna see that would benefit from a retinol use is dullness, so your skin might start looking a little bit gray, lacklustre, and also the texture of your skin can change slightly. So you can get slightly, again, the pores can start to enlarge if you haven't had sort of larger pores before, but the texture of the skin can get slightly rougher, not quite as smooth and just not looking quite so plump. Going into your 40s, the first signs, visible signs of photo damage start to really show, which is your pigmentation marks, maybe some redness, so the skin tone becomes a little bit uneven, and also potentially, again, that those first signs of the very fine lines appearing. Now we move into our 50s, and the more advanced signs of photo damage will be visible, so definitely more pigmentation, more textural changes in the skins, fine lines, wrinkles, um, more open pores and definitely more sort of uh, potential for redness and also all the other sort of symptoms we said before about the lacklustre and the lack of glow and sometimes the skin can go a slightly more yellowy colour so we can improve all of that with good regular retinol use. So what do retinoids actually do? They communicate with your cells. What that means is that when enough of the active ingredient, which is actually retinoic acid, and I'm gonna go into how a retinol turns into retinoic acid in a moment. When enough of the active retinoic acid actually gets into the deeper layers of the skin, it acts like a messenger and actually re-educates the, the skin cells to work more efficiently. It can balance the skin, um, and it helps to really stimulate the skin to work in a much better way and to become nice and healthy. So I'm going to go into now all the individual things that we know retinol can do for the skin. Okay, so we know that retinoic acid can help to stimulate blood flow. So this one is a bit of a catch-22 situation because Retinols, if they're introduced correctly and not overdone, can be fantastic for conditions such as rosacea and other inflammatory conditions where the skin's prone to going very red. But if you overdo it too quickly, and for some people they can never really move up too high, they have to stay on the lower percentages, you could end up overstimulating the, the more problematic skin conditions that are prone to inflammation. So that's just something to bear in mind, but I will go through some hints and tips for you in a moment 
how you could introduce some of the milder retinoids into your regime if you are prone to rosacea. Retinoids are fantastic at breaking down existing pigment within the skin, so the melanocytes that are already there, so if you've got brown patches and pigmentation, but it also helps to inhibit further pigmentation production. So it only works where you're overproducing pigment, so your, your natural skin colour will still be there, it doesn't bleach your skin, it just stops the overactivity of pigmentation. So again, if you are prone to hyperpigmentation or you're prone to post-inflammatory pigmentation and you have some damage, retinol will really, really help to um, even out your skin tone. Quite an interesting benefit of retinol is it actually helps to stimulate your own production of ceramide. Now ceramide is something that you, we all make naturally and it's um, mainly found in the upper layers of our skin where it forms part of our barrier function that helps to protect our skin from any aggressors coming in but it also holds the good stuff in so moisture is the main one so if you're putting loads of really really amazing ingredients on your skin and your barrier function is really compromised quite often they will just evaporate off the skin without having the benefits that we want a lot of people think that retinoids are exfoliants so they actually exfoliate your skin they don't what they do is they stimulate and regulate your cellular turnover and what your cellular turnover is is how quickly you make new skin cells and how efficiently the old dead skin cells fall off so it's basically how the cells move up through the layers and then fall off so you've got this constant cycle normally it takes about 30 days for your skin to go through that full cycle when you're using retinol that can be as little as 14 to 21 days. So it means that you're speeding up everything. You're speeding up by getting rid of the pigmentation, you're speeding up unblocking the pores, bringing that new skin cells to the surface quicker so the skin's gonna look fresher and brighter. So it's actually cellular turnover that increases. It's not exfoliating in the same way that let's say a glycolic acid would. Okay, so there is another misconception about using retinoids um, when it comes to sun exposure. So if you're going to be going on a warm holiday or whether you should use retinols in the summer or not. It is widely accepted that using retinols during the summer is absolutely fine. You just have to be a little bit more cautious. The main time you wouldn't want to go out in the sun is if you are actually going through the active phase where your skin is flaking, peeling and if it's quite red the same way as you would never put your you know skin if it was red in the sun you wouldn't do it if you were having a um, a little bit of a retinol reaction either the most important things about using a retinoid and going into the sun is you only ever apply them in the evening so the sun isn't directly on the skin when the retinol is in contact with your skin and you just use really good SPF and I always suggest using an antioxidant as well in the mornings which will really protect the skin. Occasionally some of my clients will reduce how often they use the retinols in the summer, maybe going down to twice a week instead of every other day. Retinol is quite flexible like that, you can slightly adjust the usage um, depending on, on what your skin needs at the time. So far, all of the benefits I've talked about, you will get those with any of the, the good retinols and some of the other lesser molecules if you're using them quite regularly. When it comes down to really building collagen in the skin and elastin and getting a big thickening of the deeper layers of skin so you get a lot of plumpness, you're going to be a little bit hard pushed to get a really dramatic result with a non-prescription retinoid. So some of the retinols, you will definitely see a little bit of an improvement in lines and wrinkles, but you're not gonna see anything sort of dramatic. If you want to get that next level of effect, you would need to move on to a prescription Retin-A product. And these are pure retinoic acids, basically, and they are the original retinoic acids, the retinoids that were used sort of 30 years ago. The main issue with those are you are more likely to get the, the redness and the peeling and the flaking for a period before your skin settles. 
which is totally normal and if you kind of know about it you can prepare for it and, and use the right sort of complementary products to get you through it but it's definitely going to be more of a noticeable peeling and, and things like that. So as I've already mentioned there are several different types of retinoids and I want to talk to you about the four most popular ones that you would probably be able to find. So the first one and the one that's probably most widely available on the high street is retinol palmitate. Retinol palmitate is the weakest derivative of vitamin A. When it goes onto the skin, the enzymes in your skin have to turn the retinol palmitate into retinoic acid. Probably only about 1-2% to of the retinol palmitate actually gets turned into retinoic acid. The retinoic acid is the active ingredient that will actually cause all of these changes within the skin. So we want as much of that as possible. People that would probably benefit from using retinol palmitate would be probably younger skins that maybe have a little bit bit of congestion but nothing too serious going on and they just want to use something that's going to help to maintain the health of their skin and also anyone that's got really hyperreactive sensitive skin could start with a retinol palmitate wait for their skin to acclimatize to it and then attempt to move up onto the next level of retinoid which are the retinols and retinols are the molecule that I've had the most experience with and most of the products that I have in my clinic contain uh, pure retinol up to a percentage of 0.5%. Retinol is the molecule that's sort of one away from becoming retinoic acid. Between 5 to 10% of the retinol will be changed into uh, retinoic acid, so a much higher percentage than the retinol palmitate. I mean, I find most of my clients get fantastic results with retinols. Most of the people that I see, they just want their skin to look fresher, they want um, fine lines to be softened pigmentation to be corrected, um, an overall glow of the skin and a smoothness and you can definitely get that with most of the non-prescription retinols out there. So there is a new ingredient that's coming onto the market which is sort of showing to be a hybrid between retinol and retinoic acid which is quite exciting but it's still new so I'm sort of waiting to see what happens with it. It's retinol and retinolate or they've taken the two molecules and they've kind of put them together so you get the not as aggressive as the retinoic acid which means you're not getting quite so much irritation but you're getting more of the power of that retinoic acid so you're actually seeing better results so that's definitely one to look at and then finally we have our actual retinoic acid which most people know is retin-a and that's prescription only and there's quite a few different prescription brands the main difference with these products is they are the ones that you are going to get quite a lot of reaction with in terms of peeling flaking, and some redness so i'm going to talk in general how to use retinol and what to expect when you start using it but first of all just a little note on if you are using it specifically if you're an acne sufferer when you first start using a vitamin a based product on your skin you are going to probably get a bit of a flare up and the reason for that is the retinoids are very stimulating it's trying to rebalance your skin and make your skin work in a different way and if you already have quite a lot of congestion under the skin and you've got a lot of buildup of dead skin cells then the retinol is going to start working on all of that and it's quite possible that your skin will purge so you could go through a period where the skin gets worse before it gets better but just try and see yourself through it because if you can get to the other side of that then it will have really great long-term effects and help you to really manage your acne and congestion really well. One of the other benefits that retinols have with acneic skin is it can actually help to reduce the swelling. It also helps to prevent and reduce the likelihood of getting scarring, post-inflammatory pigmentation. It helps to reduce the redness and this is old scarring and old redness as well as new stuff that could be forming so really it's a great ingredient to use but you just need to make sure you do it intelligently and just really slowly build your skin up to tolerate it. In my experience it takes at least 8 to 12 weeks to really see the benefits of using a retinol regularly. So please don't think you're going to see magical results after a week or two because you won't. 
and you have to make sure you're very consistent with your use. It is very, very normal with pure retinol especially and definitely prescription retinol to get some flaking and sort of peeling of the skin. As I mentioned earlier, it's because it's um, increasing your cellular turnover, so you're just getting rid of a lot of dead skin cells very quickly. And this is great for how the skin's gonna look but at the time it can be a little bit frustrating. So you just wanna make sure you've got some really good gentle moisturizers that you can use during that period. One of the other benefits of using a retinoid that I really love is that after a while, it actually makes your skin more susceptible or receptible to other ingredients that you're using. So if you are using antioxidants, peptides, growth factors, you will actually notice that your skin will respond much better to them as well. So if you're trying to get multiple effects from various different ingredients, you'll definitely see more of an improvement when the retinol has prepared your skin first. Don't try and use lots of new ingredients all at once. If you're gonna start using a retinol, use the retinol for probably six to eight weeks first before you introduce another really active ingredient because that's way too many new messages and too many stimulants all at once. For me, you kind of need to listen to your own skin. If you have got very, very sensitive skin and it's quite reactive and very prone to going red, you need to go low. You need to look at your retinol palmitates. You need to look at the lowest percentage of retinol if you're going for a pure retinol, so maybe a 0.3%, 0.2%. And you need to be very careful in your introduction into your regime. So you wouldn't be using it every night, so maybe you would use it every third night and you would wait a couple of weeks and if your skin didn't have any kind of reaction, you would increase your usage to every other night. Again, wait two or three weeks. Then, if everything is still fine, you can increase it to every night. Once you're happy that your skin has really tolerated the low percentage, you could then try a slightly higher percentage. You're probably not gonna see the best results with retinol use for, as I said, anything from six to nine months. For me is when I really start to see client skin looking the best, but you certainly need to wait eight to 12 weeks to see those first benefits coming through. So the, the four ways of introducing retinol into your regime to make sure that you don't overstimulate your skin. One is pre-moisturizing, so the skin um, can tolerate the retinol when it goes on a little bit more. The second one is mixing 50-50, a very plain moisturizer with your retinol product. The third one is how often you use your retinol product. So it can be as little as once a week. Um, and then you can work your way up all the way to every night. And the fourth one is start low and work your way up gradually. You're still gonna get the results. It might take a little bit longer to get there, but it's better to take your time and get great results without the irritation than overstress your skin.